Hi, welcome to online tutorial videos from JCBRO Labs. For more information, please visit us at www.jcbrolabs.org. You can also download the source code uh, or the MATLAB code of this video from their website. In this video, we'll talk about how to generate the pulse position modulation in MATLAB. So let's first have a look on the pulse position modulation. So uh, this waveform shows the pulse position modulation. In this waveform or in this modulation technique, the position of the pulse varies with respect to the amplitude of the message. So the information of the amplitude of message is being encoded into the position of the pulse. So this is a pulse strain and the position or the pulse has been shifted by the amount uh, of the amplitude at that particular instant. So we will uh, no, uh, we will now program MATLAB. Uh, we will write a MATLAB program in order to generate this. And let's have a look on the procedure of generating it. So the procedure is very simple. First, we will generate a uh, input waveform, and then we will generate a sawtooth waveform. And the amplitude of the sawtooth waveform will be slightly higher than that of the message signal in order to make it a comparison between these two. So as soon as uh, the instant at which the sawtooth amplitude is greater than the message amplitude, from that position we will generate a pulse. And the same period will remain same like a starting period. So this is a starting period of the pulse, uh, original pulse. But now the position have been shifted by this amount and this amount of position shift has been determined by the this sort of waveform. As soon as the amplitude of sort of waveform goes above the message signal, we will generate a pulse of a specific duration at that instant. So uh, the accuracy will be higher if the amplitude or the duration of the pulse will be shorter. So that's the shorter is the pulse in duration, uh, the accuracy will be more higher to it. So now we will learn how to write a MATLAB code for simulating this. So let's open MATLAB. In MATLAB, let's first define the message signal frequency that is 2. Let's define the carrier wave frequency which is your uh, a kind of uh, uh, pulse strain 20. And let's define the sampling frequency uh, because uh, in digital system higher the sampling frequency higher will be the resolution. And let's define the time uh, for uh, the duration for which we will generating a pulse. So we are generating a signal of one second duration. Now let's create a time axis which goes from 0 to 1 by fs to t. Uh, this command uh, increases uh, one extra sample so we will make it up to only so that everything remains fine. Okay. Now uh, we will define the duty cycle of the square pulse or the pulse strain which we are going to generate. So we will having a duty cycle of 10. So the lesser the duty cycle the uh, uh, more accurate will be the modulation. But in order to display it we are taking a duty cycle of 10. And then we are taking a period like uh, what will be the period in uh, or in other sense how many samples will be there in a period of 20 hertz uh, square wave with uh, 10 duty cycle. So first let's say I have a sample. So this can be identified simply by fs by fc and then on time period number of samples in on time simple period divided by duty. So it comes out to be 5. So there will be total 50 samples in one period and out of which for 10% duty cycle there will be 5 samples which will, will be on at that particular instant. So that's created. Now let's create a square wave. There is a built-in command in MATLAB for generating a square wave. So 2 pi fc into n 
comma specify the data type so let's see how this square wave looks like so this is a square wave of 10% duty cycle and the width between each pulse is same as it is a periodic sequence so now let's generate a message signal message signal we are taking a sinusoid wave so simply sine 2 pi into fm into n so let's see how the message signal looks like so this is a message signal now let's generate a triangular wave or we can say a sawtooth wave as we discussed the amplitude of this triangular wave needs to be greater than that of the message signal waveform so we are taking a 20 percent extra amplitude so the amplitude of uh, this sawtooth wave will be 1.25 and let's generate the sawtooth wave uh, there is again a command direct sawtooth to pi fc into n let's see and again uh, let's have a plot on the same uh, with our uh, square pulse so in order to visualize that both have the same period so the starting duration is same and both have the same period so this square pulse or pulse strain or this sort of wave both should have the same period okay now as we discussed like uh, in this case we need to identify the instant at which uh, this is crossing the masses and we need to identify only on that instant so uh, there could be many ways of it of doing that but we'll do in another way so first we'll find the um, uh, identity uh, those cell values for which the sawtooth waveform amplitude is greater than that of the massive signal waveform so now if we go to the idd we'll find these samples these are the cell numbers for which amplitude is greater but we need to identify only those samples at which this particular this would be one simple uh, one cell number uh, at which uh, uh, as soon as it goes above the amplitude of the masses you know so let's differentiate it and then we will get the difference another variable idd which will give the difference value uh, as soon as there is a change we will get the higher value so let's plot it idd then it will simply those samples at which we are getting uh, those instant at which we are getting higher than the masses amplitude sample so out of which we need to identify only these samples values where it is uh, not equals to 1 so now we will uh, find those out of this IDD, we will find those one which have uh, which are not equals to one. So we'll have this ID 16, 22, 27, 27, and so on. So if we go towards the ID, then if we say like this was a sample number 17 but here we are getting 16 and then next was 22 and it was yeah it is uh, 23 but we are getting 20. so all these id contains all those information at which we are at at what sample the amplitude of sawtooth waveform is greater than that of the mass signal so we need to add one plus the first starting sample is missing in the IDD so we will remove this uh, all those irregularities soon we'll make a temporary variable and its first sample will be simple ID of 1 right and then its 2 to length of IDD plus 1 equals to id of idd plus 
so now if you look at this temp temp variable we have captured all those uh, uh, cell values at which uh, this sawtooth waveform is crossing the massive signal waveform that is at the instant 35th sample and then 95th sample as we discussed so and then 146 so everything has been attained here so now uh, we can easily generate a sort of uh, a ppm waveform now let's first create a ppm of zeros one two length of either s or m uh, okay or it is wrong one comma yes so this ppm signal has been generated for over zeros now we'll run a for loop because uh, we need to put the sam uh, that square pulse or that pulse at that instant where sort of waveform is crossing the amplitude of massive signal so we'll go from one to length of tam and then ppm of tamp of i to tamp of i plus the number of on samples in pulse minus 1 equals to 1 and then and now let's see how our ppm waveform looks like so this is our ppm and you can see this is dense area and this is lesser dense area than this as compared to the massive signal so the position is being changed the while the duration of the pulse is constant so this is all about this <coughs> ppm waveform so it may not be very clear uh, in this waveform how this is working or whether it is correct or not so we have created a script file for the same and let's run it and visualize it how it looks like so this is the output this was the massive signal in blue line and the red curve shows the sort of waveform and this is the pulse strain uh, or you can say the carrier wave and now uh, concentrate on uh, each pulse now if we talk about this first pulse now this first pulse have been shifted to this location because the massive uh, the at this point the uh, this sort of waveform is crossing the massive waveform so corresponding to this we got this pulse so this pulse have been shifted by this much of amount and this much of amount is according to the amplitude of the masses now in this uh, this amplitude corresponds to the because this minus 1 to plus 1 all the range of this massive signal have been shifted uh, have been translated in other sense from this point to this point so it is nearly greater than half though so the message and the pulse have been shifted by more than half duration now for the second pulse for second pulse have been shifted at this point correspondingly here yeah? and its amplitude was starting from here so this much of shift has been observed now if we talk about third pulse so this is the starting location of the third pulse which is obviously the second pulse is not achieving it so from here it will be more clear now third pulse have been shifted here and this third pulse have been shifted to here similarly fourth pulse this fourth pulse here and so on so the position or the shift of the pulses from the starting position is being varied with respect to the amplitude of the masses signal. so if we talk about this point this is the pulse number one two three four five six seven and eighth eighth pulse one two three four five six seven and eighth this is the pulse which needs to be shifted corresponding to this and if we look from here one two three four five six seven eight this is the eighth pulse and the shift from its starting position is very less because the amplitude also very less at that point so this is how we generate a ppm signal uh, in matlab 
and the same way it is being generated uh, on the hardware side so the advantages of the ppm of pwm it's energy efficient and it's very less to the prone uh, very less prone to noise because noise generally changes the amplitude but that doesn't change the position of the pulse so it is very less prone to noise uh, if there is a highly highly noisy noisy environment then this ppm signal is more preferred as compared to pam or pwm signal so i hope you understand uh, how to generate this ppm signal in this uh, video and you can also download the same code from our website that is www.jcbrlabs.org so that's it for this video thank you